Bioidenticals still made from products like soy? Absolutely. Is there any risk in that? We hear a lot of people saying now. Not when you not get that pure. In uh, terms yes. of soy being GMO and things like that? Or? Yes. Well, good question. When they start getting down to the level of purification that you're dealing with the molecules, um, it's likely that we're moving beyond the problems associated with GMO. Now, you know, the truth is I don't know the answer to that. And um, like a lot of people are allergic to soy, mm -hmm. but they don't have, there's, it's very, very rare to see someone allergic to hormones. Okay. Uh, it does happen to bioidentical hormones. It does happen, but it's extremely rare. Mm -hmm. And you'd think if there was a real problem there, they'd be allergic to, because so many people are allergic to reactive to soy, you'd think we'd see a lot of reactivity to these hormones. And yet you're asking a ultra-refined question around does it get down to the GMO in the genes? Just shooting from the hip because I've never been posed that question. I find it very interesting. I'd say probably not. We're probably at a level of purification where it isn't about the genes, it's about the steroid molecule. Mm. And I hope that's true. Because <laughs> purity does matter. Sure. And uh, I've really faced the issue of purity about 10 years ago and uh, have gone a long way down that pathway for yeah. different reasons. And maybe you'll ask me about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about them a little bit. Well, um, these steroid hormones, and that would include the estrogens mm -hmm. and testosterone and DHEA and, and progesterone, uh, when you get them in a pure state, they are not soluble in water. Okay. And they're not soluble that well in fat. Hmm. And in fact, in order to dissolve them, you've got to have some very aggressive chemicals to get them into solution. Hmm. And the creams and gels that uh, women are receiving from pharmacies, um, when you open up that jar and you look at 80 grams of gel in there, theoretically, that estrogen, let's say estradiol or biased, is perfectly dispersed in solution in that gel. And if it wasn't, it would all settle to the bottom. And the top layers mm -hmm. wouldn't contain nearly as much hormone as the bottom layers. Well, they are, at least theoretically, perfectly in solution in those gels and creams. But in order to achieve that, they've got to use some very aggressive solvents. The, the one that was one of the initial and current favorites it's called Carbapol, for example, or Carbamir. And if you open it up, it looks like a clear gel. And if you take a whiff of it, it smells like alcohol. And about 10 years ago, I opened up a jar, even though I'd been using this as recommended by my teachers uh, for 10 years by that time. Um, I went, gosh, I'm having women apply this to their skin twice a day. And this has got a, a, a real a smell of alcohol to it. How good is that for the skin? Mm -hmm. How good is that for the women? And then I started doing some research, and I started seeing carbapol is probably the least of the problems, but as you get into the more aggressive uh, patches and these new pharmaceutical gels, you see a list of chemicals that are also in the carrier. That's what those are called. Mm -hmm. So you have hormone plus carrier, and the hormone goes into the carrier. And there's about a 400 times as much carrier is there is hormone. There's only milligrams of hormone sitting in 80 grams, for example, of carrier. So by far the greatest thing that the women are getting exposed to on a chemical basis is the carrier. And you start looking at, uh, like for example, the pharmaceutical companies produce a bioidentical estradiol in Carbapol. What did they choose? Three of the major uh, products out there are in Carbapol gel. But when you look a little further, you see there's other chemicals in there. And there's things like ethylene and diethylene glycol and propylene glycol. And uh, when I was a, a late teen and in my early 20s, I loved to work on cars, my own cars. Mm -hmm. And I never mind getting my hands dirty with the oil and stuff like that. But the one job I did not like was emptying that radiator because the antifreeze was caustic to the skin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you ever did that, but mm -hmm. it was weird, that mm -hmm. stuff. It was way too strong. <laughs> and what that antifreeze is, is propylene glycol. And why do they put it in there? Because it really does bring things into solution. Hmm. But it's, so I started seeing the chemical nature of some of the stuff being used out there. 
and I went, uh, I don't like this. This doesn't feel good to me. Um, doc, you know, do no harm type thing. Mm -hmm. Most women, we get such toxic exposures that what's a little more toxicity yeah. out there, but, but I don't want to be part of that. So I started seeking other solutions, and we have one. And, and so the, the main carrier that we use these days is a uh, proprietary uh, blend of uh, oils that do not get rancid, are 100% organic, certified mm -hmm. organic oils. And that's what, we're, that's what we're using. So when we put, when the pharmacist puts the hormone into this bottle of oil, it sinks to the bottom. And mm. the big difference is women have to shake that okay. bottle to get it up into suspension, which it does very well, and then they put it on their skin. <laughs> and the pharmacist once said to me, who was making this up for me, he says, why don't we get that in the solution? <laughs> and I said, that sounds fun. I mean, that would... I would make a more elegant product. Uh, how do you want to do that? And he says, well, I'd like to use a little uh, propylene glycol. And I went, oh, yeah, that's the very thing. I thought he had some magic thing. That Back he to where he started. He has to use a solvent. Yeah. Well, what is a solvent? It comes from dinosaurs or from oil or whatever, gasoline or mm -hmm. something like that. Or some of these chemical names you don't want to read. Mm -hmm. So that's the purity issue that we're dealing with in Oh, um, the, the particular oil that we use is wonderful for the skin. Women love it. It's a, a part of the blend in there as this uh, oil that's used by many massage therapists because it's such an excellent oil. So we're very proud of that. It's been a major advance in putting all that together.